we see paved asphalt and concrete every day. We see roadside land on the highway every day. But can we see it differently? It might be that the roadsides are the key to unlocking solar arrays and the expansion of our energy grid. My name is Allie Kelly. I'm executive director of The Ray. We are convinced that technologies exist today to unlock those forgotten miles of highway roadsides, to produce clean energy. In the final chapter, transportation may in fact save the world. The Ray was founded by Ray Anderson's daughter, Harriet Anderson Langford. In 2015, Georgia dedicated an 18-mile stretch of Interstate 85 to Ray C. Anderson. My father was known as the greenest industrialist of the century. There's nothing that is sustainable about this highway. And I knew that I couldn't leave it like that. In 2016, we sought approval to pilot right-of-way solar on the highway. That has become a platform for proving and promoting infrastructure projects geared to net zero in transportation. And mapping in GIS is a really important component. We have so many available land in south to west of the U.S., right? Using GIS technology, we identify which area are suitable for solar panel development. It looks like that area has so much land available for solar. With GIS, we take into account slope because we don't want to be building solar arrays on roadsides that are too steep certainly tree cover and surface characteristics. Also, solar radiation and the orientation of the right-of-way. We calculate the peak sun hours for each solar panel point. The models show us that this solar array has the potential to power more than 1,200 homes. I don't see how this work would be happening without GIS. We also support other states moving into those projects at scale and faster. One state to have early interest was Maine. We worked with Maine DOT to choose and build their first location. The success has been so overwhelming, not only in the new revenue that it has generated, but in the community support for the projects. We need to next go deeper into clean energy transmission infrastructure. The United States faces one of our greatest challenges, which is expanding the energy grid. Currently, we know that there are about two terawatts of clean energy projects that are stalled because they cannot interconnect to the grid. In order for us to move clean energy from where it's generated to where it's needed, like EV charging stations, we have to move quickly. Climate change is putting pressure on the grid. It's under stress everywhere in the country. We need to build clean energy transmission, and we need to do it now. Transmission of energy could be the overhead wires, but can be underground. Underground transmission is taking those ugly above ground towers and burying it. So in case of natural disaster or other occurrences, it's a safer alternative. 
What GIS does is let us look at a lot of different alternatives very quickly and pick the best way, the most environmentally friendly way, the one least disruptive to communities. It lets you do planning and design that would normally take years, sometimes in days. We have used the GIS mapping tool to understand the highway right-of-way areas that can be developed to expand the grid. As we are battling the climate crisis, we need to be thinking about where to take this work in the future, both here and then the other side. Personally, I have twin boys, and I want them to be able to live in a world that's healthy and that gives them future opportunity. Where we're more attuned to the planet and more responsible for its resources. We build a more resilient infrastructure and a more resilient future, or we take the consequences of that inaction. I don't think we have a choice.